Article 11, which is the budget, uh, and it reads as follows. Article 11, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $28,141,882. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $27,595,116, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the town of Hampton or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, Roman 10, and Roman 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. A majority vote is required. This budget is recommended by the Board of Selectmen 311. It is recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee 5 to 4. The fiscal impact note from the Finance Department. The proposed operating budget figure of $28,141,882 is an increase of $1,299,570 more than the budget amount adopted in 2018 of $26,842,312. The net estimated 2019 tax impact of the proposed operating budget is 38.7 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. The default budget figure of $27,595,116 is an increase of $752,804 more than the budget amount adopted in 2018 and the net estimated tax impact for the default budget is 22.4 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 11 moved by Mr. Ludell? Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Woolsey. Um, is, there somebody, is there someone from the Budget Committee who wishes to speak to the Article 11? Seeing none, is there someone from the Board of Selectmen who would like to speak to the budget? Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Moderator, I'm going to ask for your indulgence a little bit because I, I think this is a very important article and I want to make sure everybody in, in the public and all the voters understand the context. I watched the Budget Committee deliberations and a number of times people's concerns about raising their taxes came up and it's a legitimate concern. What do you do at home? when you're looking for your 2019 budget, you're sitting down looking at your checkbook and you're figuring what expenses you have on the one side and what revenue and income you have on the other side. Are you gonna be able to pay your bills? I'm gonna share a letter with you dated September 27, 2012 to uh, Fran McMahon, chairman of the planning board. Dear Fran, I am writing to you to urge the planning board to consider anew the adoption of additional impact fees on new developments to address the burdens they are imposing upon town infrastructure, such as public safety, recreation, sewers, and drains. Pursuant to RSA 674 colon 16 and RSA 674 colon 21, the town has adopted an impact fee ordinance at the 2002 town meeting, Article 11, and amended at the March 2003 town meeting, Article 16. Under Section 4.4 of this ordinance, impact fees may be assessed to new development to compensate the town for the proportional share of capital facilities generated by new development in town, including capital facilities to be constructed or which were constructed in anticipation of new development by the town. These fees can be assessed to meet town needs as well as to address increased burdens on the schools. So far, the planning board has only implemented a school impact fee, which was adopted on April 28, 2004, after a detailed study was performed by Bruce Mayberry of School Capital Needs. Ms. Wolsey, I'm gonna jump in here. I need a connection to the budget figure. That's what we're talking we're, about. We're I talking money, Mr. We, Moderator. No, we're, we're talking and Article we're talking, 11. We're, we're talking, talking Article revenue. 11. Do revenue. you have a comment for the, for the budget figure? And we have, the budget figure is a figure that needs to be paid out of our taxes with offsetting revenue. 
The letter I started reading to you was written by your town manager, Mr. Welch, in September, a couple of months before Mr. Welch and I appeared in person on December 5th, 2014, uh, 20, yeah, 2016, I'm sorry, uh, to beg the planning board to implement impact fees. Revenue. I have here a printout from our assessing office. They took years 2005 to 2018, and the building value in those years, 13 years, 278 million. $80,700 in building value. We are shortchanging our residents, our taxpayers in this community by not supporting the budget with corollary income. We need revenue. The budget, as stated here by the Board of Selectmen, is what the needs of the town are in this calendar year. But don't forget, you're going to need money coming in on the other side. You're going to need revenue coming in to support this. I don't want to see the burden placed on me or any other taxpayer in this community without offsetting revenue. And for those of you who have your town reports like I do, this 2002 report, and it outlines very clearly the purpose of the impact fees. And this was proposed by your planning board. Okay, I'm gonna move to so Mr. We Rice. Need, we have so a budget article. I'm sure there's a lot of time support, spent by the Board of Selectmen on. Support the budget, but demand offsetting revenue. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15, Heather Lane. I think that most of the residents of Hampton join me in being increasingly frustrated when we go through this song and dance every year when it comes to our budget. Every year, we elect people to run our town. Our Board of Selectmen and the, the agencies within the town, the staffs within the town, put together a budget for what it takes from a policy standpoint to run the town. We need to do this to make Hampton the town that it is. There's a cost associated with each one of these things, and they propose the cost, which I have to presume is the best one that they can come up with for what it is they want to do. Then those figures go to our municipal budget committee. Now, having been on both and chaired both the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, I can tell you that the job of the Budget Committee is to look at those proposed costs and advise and, and evaluate them and say, is this reasonable and is it appropriate? They're not supposed to touch the policy, they're just supposed to look at what is proposed to be spent and say whether it's reasonable or appropriate. Once they go down through that and they fly spec every single line and they get to the bottom and they say, yeah, all of these look good, that's fine. And we vote on these by a majority vote. Wasn't too many years ago that the only thing we put in the town report was, or on the warrant articles was, approved by the Board of Selectmen, approved by the, or recommended by the Board of Selectmen, recommended by the Budget Committee, and that was it. Now we've gotten to the point where we want to know to what degree did they do it. The degree doesn't really count when you come right down to it, because we work on a majority rules basis. Well. In recent years, the thing that has really frustrated me has been the default budget. The default budget is supposed to be a fail-safe, so that if the budget doesn't pass and you think it's excessive, at least we don't have no budget to operate on. So it falls back to the point of, this is what we're obligated to do. It goes back to last year, plus the things that are thrown in for contractual requirements and so forth. But that's all it is. It's supposed to be a fallback, a safety net. But in recent years, the members of our, some of our boards have weaponized the default budget. And they've started to calculate it in advance. Well, if we do this, we can do this number, we can do that number, and so forth. If we could keep operating on a default budget, like some people think, we'd be operating on the 1945 budget for the town of Hampton, and you know that wouldn't work. 
You absolutely know that. So let's stop playing the game that we keep going through and dancing around to save a buck here and there. I'm sure that these people in the budget committee, if they could, the majority of them would vote for the lowest possible cost. They're taxpayers too. They don't like to pay, pay any more than they have to. But let's not get into this game about the regular budget versus the default budget. The people you have elected have recommended that these things be done to run the town, and the budget committee has reviewed it, and a majority of that budget committee has said, yes, these are reasonable and appropriate costs. If you don't like the people that have done that, vote new people in. That's why we have elections. That's why we roll them over. We don't elect a whole new board every year. We roll them over each year. But please, don't jeopardize the town's ability to run itself. You know, every time you do a default budget, the whole staff has to go back again and come up with a brand new budget because they don't have quite as much money, so they've got to redo it all over again. That, imagine how much time and money that wastes having to go back and redo the budget that they've already done one time before. They've got to reprioritize, they've got to reprice everything. I support the, the, the budget that the town officials come up with. That's why we elected them. I might not like it. I'd love to be paying the 1945 tax rates. I sure would. So would all of us. But let's trust the people we elected. Let's move the budget. And let's get on with running the town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Zanoy, so the question before us is, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate $28,141,882? What say you, Mr. Zanoy? I am not in favor of it. I think that's overstated or overinflated. I've been through the budget in detail, line by line. There's over 400 lines. Multiple lines are overstated. I think the budget process here in this town is flawed. The town manager's review of it, the board of selectmen's review of it, as well as the budget committees. I don't support this article. I will vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanoy. Mr. Woodell. Jim Waddell, 190 Kings Highway. I just think it's important that people, the citizens, take a look at this budget and take a look at this budget line by line and make their own decision on what the town needs. You can't just look at the bottom line and say that's too much. You have to decide what does the town need and does this budget follow that. If you, you know, the, the budget process is the department heads make a budget, they bring it to the town manager, the town manager brings it to the selectmen, the selectmen pass it on to the budget committee. The budget committee then comes up with a budget. It is their budget. And when the budget committee comes up with a budget and initially doesn't recommend it, it's not logical. It doesn't make sense. And eventually they did recommend it, but did they do their job? I don't know. But it's the job of the individual citizens to make up the mind of whether they want this budget or not. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waddell. Mr. Warburton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Brian Warburton, 24 Sanborn Road, Hampton. Before I make some comments about some misinformation we've just heard, I do want to uh, have a moment of personal privilege. Um, I got elected to the Budget Committee this past year, having been away from public service for a while. Um, I found serving this year with Chairman Jones one of the best years that I have ever served on any boards in this town. <coughs> And I'll tell you why. For six years, if anybody has followed all the budget meetings like I have, Chairman Jones, and prior to that, not only has done his homework, but he has given to the public more information than many prior chairmen. He has dissected. He has provided through his HamptonBud.com website, RSAs, and how they familiarize themselves with how we look at preparing and sending to the taxpayers a budget. And I want to applaud Tim Jones, because he's worked very hard night and day. His attendance has been exemplary. Now to the budget. I hear a lot of people say they watch the meetings. Well, there's a reason why the majority voted five to four, because we had to. Let me repeat that. The Budget Committee has to recommend a budget, whether we like it or not. 
Mr. Welch supplied information at the 11th hour prior to our last, one of our last meetings. Many of us, and I, me included, were against the budget. Mr. Waddell made comments which, in, in many references, he was actually right in saying, well, if you're going to recommend the budget, you, you reduce 50,000, well, why would you not be in favor if that's all you reduced, right? Well, because I wanted to reduce 600,000, but I knew what was going to happen. To Jerry Zanoy's point, this budget process is flawed. What would have happened is they would have paraded in here, added 600,000 back in, and we're here, we're back at square one. The issue that the taxpayers at home need to understand, I believe, after this last year more than ever. We've had a lot of expertise on this committee. We've had a lot of people come in and give presentations to us. I think the real issue is that for the first time in many years, the Budget Committee asked questions that were never asked. And I think we brought forth a ton of information. Uh, the real issue, and I'll leave you with this, and it's something I plan on revisiting next year. Two years ago, we asked the voters to approve, and it fell short 53%, we needed 60%, to be able to have the Budget Committee get at the default budget. That's what needs to happen, so that we can recommend a default number, which we don't have the power or the authority to do at this point. I would love to be able to do that. I've had issues throughout on these budgets for several years. I think sometime it would be nice, and I've said it to the schools too, let's give the taxpayers a couple years breaks, right? Let's just kind of get back in time and kind of lay back and say, okay, do we need all this? Our department heads gave great presentations. And if you watch the meetings, we asked a lot of questions, much like a lot of the articles coming up. So I just want to say as a member and proud member of the Budget Committee, I think we did do due diligence, and I think we asked some great questions, and I think the message has been said that this is going to be the continued uh, focus as we move through the years. At the end of the day, we are here for all of us, the taxpayers, and by asking questions and delivering answers, that's what we're about. But I wanted to clarify the issue about why the Budget Committee 5 to 4 was recommended, because it would have gone the other way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warburton. Uh, Mr. Jones, so the question before us is, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate a total of $28,141,882? I know we've had some commentary about process, about impact fees, but I think the question before us, not I think, my opinion is on March 12th, people are going to walk into the polls, should they vote for this number or not, a yes or no? So, Mr. Jones, can you help us out on Article 11 on that question? Shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate the amount of $28,141,882 for its budget? Yes, I can. Okay. Vote no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone on else? On a serious note, <laughs> that is a serious note, by the way, but I did want to uh, Do you want to offer, elaborate on that? Yeah, I wanted to offer an explanation okay. of some of the thoughts that were given already. Mm -hmm. I've had thoughts about how it's the majority of the voters in town that will decide and so forth, uh, which I find interesting because you see there are two numbers up here. One of these numbers is the default budget. And the town voters did vote by a majority vote a couple of years ago to, to give the authority for the default budget to the budget committee. But that didn't happen, you see. So right away, it's not really true, is it, that the majority of the voters have their set. Of course, the law says it has to be 60%. As you recall, Mr. Moderator, I pointed that out when it was incorrectly labeled as a 50% requirement. But that's how the law is skewed and uh, what I would see to um, inhibit the voters from truly expressing their vote. Indeed, it's actually reflected in the Budget Committee, where the Budget Committee's vote is actually inhibited. We came up, and, I, and I'm an error here, I admit it o openly, uh, I put the question to my committee, I'm the chairman, I, I put the question, uh, is this, what's the best number we can come up with for, for the proposed budget? <clears throat> and there it is, there's the number, and, and the committee voted uh, as that being the best number. But that wasn't the right question. The right question, as it turned out, because we were subsequently advised by the Department of Revenue Administration, the right question is, what's the best number the committee can come up with and 
recommend. That extra qualifier is a, is a big deal. Now, DRA, who claims to be in an advisory organization, also stated that if we fail to actually recommend the number, they will nullify our budget number and grant the authority to the Board of Selectmen for the year. So apparently their advice sometimes masks itself as enforcement, but uh, yet when the DRA suggests to the Board of Selectmen that the second year and subsequent year appropriations for leases, which were only approved by a 50% as opposed to a 60% majority in prior years, should not be in the default budget. The selectmen ignore it, and somehow the Department of Revenue Administration has no ability to nullify that action. Yes, so the people are truly heard. No, they're not. The Budget Committee, uh, by a majority vote, in its original vote, when the question was simply put to them, which number do you think uh, the voters should vote for? Said vote for the default number because it's the least abusive. I represent the budget committee. When I say the budget committee says don't vote for this, vote no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So we've had a change since the last time that we assembled. I'm going to go on a point here, Ms. Wolsey. Since the last time we assembled, the legislature has uh, made a change in this area, and so I'm going to turn to the town manager or somebody on the select board. We are required to discuss the uh, default budget. We're not uh, able to adjust that number. We're not able to amend it, but the law has changed so that the default budget is to be presented or, or discussed, uh, whereas in the past that was not a requirement. So. Uh, Mr. Welch, or is there somebody on the board who just wants to give us a highlight of uh, this year's default budget figure, which is $27,595,116. Mr. Moderator, I'll give you a quick overview of uh, what we have for the default budget. You're correct. The legislature did, in fact, amend the statute, RSA 4013, which governs the default budget and how it's presented to you as the taxpayers and citizens of the community. In a kind of in a nutshell, and I'm going to use the solid waste um, budget as a good example. Uh, in, the, in past years, uh, when we considered the default budget and the law allowed it, uh, there was an increase which comes in June or July of each year uh, that's in accordance with the Boston Consumer Price Index and those costs go up. In the future, because they were not, in fact, voted by a town meeting, we can't add those. So when you're looking at your default budget this year, if, a, if the money that was voted in 2017, because we were currently on a default budget, if that didn't have in it <clears throat> the monies that were appropriated for future cost increases for cost of living items and so on and so forth, then they don't exist. They're not in the budget. So if you approve, give you an example, if you approve the default budget this year for solid waste, <clears throat> then the 2017 cost increases for solid waste, the 2018 cost increases for solid waste, and the 2019 costs for solid waste won't be there. Those are substantial sums. We're talking upwards of 18%. That's a lot of money on an operation that costs a tremendous amount of money for this community. But those rules have changed. So it doesn't matter really whether the budget committee sets the default budget or the selectmen set the default budget, except for one item. And this happened a number of years ago, and it can still happen. If the authority setting the default budget decides that a particular function conducted by the town is no longer needed, they can simply remove it from the default budget, declare it to be unessential. And it was only a one-time or a, a, an expense that's, that's lapsed, and then we don't need it anymore. That provision's still there. That can be done, but that could take an entire operational cost of the town away and certain subjects that, and items that you currently uh, enjoy as benefits as citizens of the town would disappear. So in a nutshell, we don't have any choice on what we put in the default budget. All increases that occur during the year, unless they were directly voted by a town meeting in a warrant article or in the budget, will not be there. So every year that you vote, devote, vote of a default budget, our costs are going to go down, yes, but the individual items in particular contracts, such as solid waste, the amount of money we have to affect those, those costs is going to go down as well. 
that was the intent of the legislation. That's what the legislature passed. And that's exactly what you have in your current default budget. That kind of in a nutshell sums up what the default budget does. We can go through each of the items that's in there if you want us to. We have had to look at every single item within the budget, every, every line item, every subline item, and every sub-subline item, and qualify whether or not they qualify as part of the default budget or not. And there are pages of documentation that show for those that do and for those that don't. So it's a very detailed analysis, and it would probably take something close to a half an hour for the finance department to go through and explain each and every one of them to you, probably more. But that's kind of in a nutshell. I thought it would be best to use solid waste as an example because it sort of typifies what's going on in default budgeting as mandated by the state. We have to live with that mandate. I hope that explains it, Ms. Morrow. Thank you, Ms. Welch. Ms. Wolsey? Yes, a brief follow-up. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody did you any favors here. The selectmen prepare an estimate of expenses needed for the current fiscal year. The job of the budget committee is to make the budget, to meet, to access any type of information they feel they need. They are the ones who are responsible by statute to make the budget so this town can run. And I will say, I think it's fair to say, Mr. Welch, that the town has provided any and all information needed to make that decision. But if your budget committee is going to represent you, represent you in a hard-working fashion, never mind throwing out a figure, the budget committee's job was to make that budget, and they didn't do you any favor with a five to four vote. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Jones, I'm going to give you a caution because I think we're, we're done. Yes. There's been a lot of discussion about process, and I find it to be really just off topic. We have a question. We're trying to educate the voters whether they should support a $28 million budget, and I know there's a lot of people involved in the process. I haven't heard a lot of it candidly today. Why is it up? What's in there? That sort of thing. But I'll leave it at, at that point. If you're going to get into a rejoinder with Ms. Woolsey about the process, I would ask you to stand down. If you have a final comment, and I think the, the, all of us here know how you feel about voting, yes or no, that's all we get on March 12th on Article 11. I invite you to make a final comment. But please keep it to the question. Well, I want to make a, a factual correction, and I have a question as well, Mr. Moderator. Uh, we did not get all the answers <coughs> that we had asked from management. We submitted four questions for legal opinion from the selectman's lawyer, also known as town council, and he refused to answer. So obviously we didn't get everything we asked for. And I, I would like, I would like uh, someone up, up there in heaven to take note of the default budget and the difference with this year's operating budget, or last year's operating budget. I think you'll find it uh, significant. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are